Before we begin the video, let me thank you all for 1,000 subscribers and nearly 50,000 views on everything wrong with Metopia in 17 minutes. And also, more than 90% of my audience who watch my videos are not subscribed, so if you enjoy this video, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. It supports the channel, and it's free. And wins in the video that were suggested by other people will be credited at the end. So without any more delays, enjoy everything great about Metopia. You know I will have a lot to say when I begin saying something about the title screen, but I love the fact the title screen music is different depending on where you last saved on the world map. The idea of an RPG where the roles of each character can be filled with anyone you want is genius. Your cast can range from relatives to a hilarious crossover. My idea for my playthrough was to bring some me's back from my 3DS run of the game, some of my Tomodachi Life OCs, and to bring in some new me's all together. And also, personalities can change how a me can perform in battle corresponding to what personality they have. A few examples being energetic me's doing a charge attack, a kind me sparing a monster, or a laid back me either using a stronger or weaker version of their attack. Now that I'm on the topic of me personalities, aside from battles, there are also events that occur outside with different dialogue depending on their personality. Most notably, when a me gives a present to their friend, an energetic me is excited to give their friend the present, whilst a cautious me is nervous to give their friend the present. And one very minor thing I've noticed, but makes total sense, is if a me has an energetic personality, the eyeliner animation is actually slightly faster than normal. Something I caught on to quickly since I decided on my first playthrough that my me should be energetic, kinda like me in real life. Actually, after looking into it a bit more when playing through, I did find out it was more than just the energetic me whose idle animation speed is different, depending on the personality. I will class the idle animation speeds in three categories, slow, medium, and fast. The personalities with the slow speed are kind, laid back, and stubborn. Medium speed is cool, airheaded, and cautious, and fast only applies to energetic me's. Personalities in this game could have just been a cosmetic feature that just changed several lines of dialogue, but seeing how it was incorporated in Miitopia, being a factor that affects how a me will also battle, I'm honestly very impressed. The Dark Lord has his own theme song. Actually, key characters get their own separate theme, and I personally think all of them are very well done. My favourite character themes being the Dark Lord, the Fab Fairies, And my favourite character theme is the Great Sages theme. Speaking of which, encouragement from the Great Sage. Outings are one of my favourite new features added to this game. Not only do they help increase me relationship levels, they are also wholesome and or funny events that can take place in a variety of locations. My personal favourite outing is the cinema outing where two me's watch a movie and one of them at the end looks at the other and tells her that they were the killer. It comes out of nowhere, and the shock on the enemy's face is priceless. The beautiful reflection on the ground in Riverdeep Cavern. The horse is a guaranteed win. You know I had to give this one a win. The new scenes where the team gathers together and discuss their current position during the adventure, or when someone joins the team, are also a very nice addition to the game. Because the whole team is about a team of me saving the world and getting closer to one another as friends, these interactions make the team feel closer altogether. One of my favourites is near the end of the adventure when the team is about to face their final battle. You see how close everyone has gone towards each other because they do not like the idea of the adventure coming to a close and going their own separate ways. At least it doesn't actually go that way at the end of the game, but I just like seeing how strong the team's bond has gone throughout the adventure. Yeah, I know they don't go their own separate ways after the adventure, but it's just the thought of something like that actually happening. Before we get back to gameplay and story wins, I will give a big win to the entirety of the me making interface in this game, because it's without a doubt the best me maker interface out of all of them as of right now. Not only do we have the full version of the Switch's default me make interface, but we also have wigs and makeup, and honestly, I would have been fine with this as a standalone title, because not only do I see this as the best me make interface ever, but it's also like an art program. Before the full version of this game came out, my main priority was to make and prepare a group of me's to fill out the rest of the roles in the game. 
Some of my favourites I made were Marnie, Pearl and Kirby, to name a few examples. And I've seen a lot of content creators go wild about this feature alone and show off other people's creations. I honestly wouldn't mind if we just got a digital download of this meme maker on the eShop. I would definitely spend a lot of time using it. Music that fits the desperation of this scene. The light reflections from the window in the princess's chamber. And the candles illuminating light around the castle. This also applies to other areas in the game. My favourite area with the illuminating lights is Nightmare Tower. The purple candles, or crystals, I'm not quite sure what these things are, but they fit the dark and gloomy atmosphere of the tower. And I like the added effect of them turning off and then back on. Seeing how Mies react to what food your icon is currently standing on is honestly very charming, and it serves as a helpful reminder to tell you what your team members like and do not like. Honestly, this conclusion is very satisfying to me. I've already expressed my distaste towards the prince of next door, but seeing that the noble boy, while not reliable in terms of combat, still had courage to make a rescue attempt. It makes the allowing of the relationship towards the princess very well deserved, and honestly, it makes me feel more happy for him now that he gets to spend more time with the princess, because when reading the description for his character, before this, he rarely got to see her, so this honestly is just a good note to add Greenhorn on. I love that Ami says they won't spoil what is coming up in next door, keeping the surprise in suspense. There is always a chance that this is somebody's first playthrough of the game and they want to experience the whole thing blindly, which is the reason why I love the fact that they didn't say what next door is all about. <laughs> Seeing how the protagonist is upset about travelling alone is quite justifiable, considering he had the help of his three friends prior to next door. Plus, I find it a bit relatable because I was quite frustrated losing my team members for the first time on my first playthrough. Aww, that was very nice. But yeah, just like the outings, the interactions inside levels are also wholesome and funny. There may be the occasional interaction where a quarrel will occur, I'm pretty sure the first quarrel in Greenhorn, the Arid Frontier specifically, was actually a scripted quarrel because every time I played through it, I got a quarrel. But hey, gotta introduce a mechanic somehow, but aside from that, these interactions are great. <laughs> Even though I've stated like a trillion times at this point that I do not like the Prince of Next Door, for some reason, I just like when he lets out the genie, he's just looking up like, what just happened? The fact you can customise your Mii's outfit without having to worry about negatively affecting your stacks. So if you don't like wearing something like, let's say, the macho suit, well, you don't need to wear it. It's pretty much the main reason why my Mii has been dressed like Mario throughout a majority of the game. This feature also applies to weapons, so no matter what, you're free to customise how your Mii looks, with no side effects. You gotta love that when you encounter the Nintendo fangirl, she is dressed like a different character depending on where you are on the world map. I find the protagonist getting mail from characters he met during his adventure and telling him what has happened in the time that has passed since the protagonist helped them, quite wholesome. And I love seeing what has changed since they last met. Seeing the Mii's different reactions to the boss fights, depending on their personality. <laughs> kind golems covering for each other and taking the hit is very fitting. Mii's with the kind personality also do the same thing. The light rays seeping in from the cracks and gaps on the ground in the Great Pyramid. Also, the use of echo effects. The last batch of interactions I haven't covered yet are interactions within the inn, with my favourites being a me trying out a new look. Granted, I sometimes think my character looks ridiculous during this interaction, but the main reason why I say this one is my favourite is because you never know what wig they will have on. Regardless, me's interacting with each other in this game was honestly one of my favourite aspects of Metopia. A perfect combination of wholesome and hilarious. I know I already gave an enemy covering an attack a win, but I have to give another one just for this boss fight. I mean, come on. 
It's a shield blocking your head. Am I the only one who finds doing this funny? <laughs> the tank's walking animation. I mean, just look at it. I don't really know how I can describe it, but those big water droplets on the leaves are just so pretty. Citrus Cave. I know I already gave the cave areas a win for both reflections on the ground and the light rays seeping in from the surface or blow, but this is definitely my favorite cave area in the game, having the most unique theme. The whole cave is filled with oranges and orange juice, or what looks like orange juice, but in my opinion, it's definitely the most interesting cave area in the game. Fair enough. I'll give them this one. That was a good pun. I find it hilarious that when the tank uses Wild Shot, everyone just looks at him in shock, like he's gone completely insane. Let me tell you a story. When Metopia Switch first came out and I began working on my Everything Wrong With parody in the game, my original plan was to add new sins to the video based off of things that I missed covering in the 3DS version of the game. One of those was, why does the fourth team member join way too late into Realm of the Fae? But in this version, we finally got an answer, so that thing got scrapped from the video. It's great to see we finally got an answer to a question that has been on my mind about this game for quite some time. I know I already complimented the Fab Fairies theme already, but what I didn't mention was that each Fab Fairy has their own separate theme, and when the Fab Fairies are all together, all their themes are combined together. The Fab Fairy stance is pure gold. Both of them. Everyone just looks like they are having the time of their lives. Even though it's kind of annoying when Mies don't come back with the gear they want to buy, I think the confused look they give when they come back with a banana or candy is amusing. And at least you get your remaining gold back too. Lotus Lake is honestly the prettiest location in the game. The pathway consists of hundreds of lily pads ranging from small to huge, curved trees with stripes and huge lotuses within the background and foreground, and the sun beaming down from the sky. I'm not going to lie, if I could live anywhere in the world of Miitopia, I'd go for this place just because of how welcoming and peaceful of an environment it is. When a Mii walks out of the tent to check up on the Mii Keeper Watch overnight, this game isn't short on wholesome moments. Horseplay is one of my favourite new additions to this game, giving each job in the game a new attack which utilises the horse in a very creative way based off of the job using the attack. It may cost a full stock of MP, but the attack itself is pretty overpowered, so I guess that balances things out. Just like the horse, the Great Sage is, and will always be a win. More relatability, because I felt the same way as him on my first playthrough. I love that this comes into play not long later with a griffin, in a scene where they let a griffin go since it doesn't have a face. It prevents the protagonist from doing a careless act. I like the added effect of when a Mii gains the hype effect effect in the music. The more Mii's with this effect not only causes the speed of the music to increase, but also causes the pitch to increase. This is also seen with other effects, such as laughter to name one example. Please tell me, I am not the only one that feels satisfied when killing a bomb enemy, and it wipes out everything else I am fighting. The window reflection on the floor in the Dark Lord's castle when lightning strikes. It works very well with the dark and creepy environment of the castle. Seeing the Mii's react when you choose continue playing, they are like, wait, we're still going? When the boss music becomes even more intense, that's when you know the boss is serious business. Throughout the playthrough, we've seen the Dark Lord give the protagonist a hard time during his adventure, but when it looks like the tides are beginning to turn, he will have another trick up his sleeve. 
The fact the Great Sage becomes the true final boss of the game. Everything has been leading up to the clash between the heroes and the Dark Lord, but after the battle, some questions remained unanswered up to that point. The Dark Curse is introduced, and we don't know anything about it up to that point. And in the Arid Frontier, there is a route that leads to a view of Powdered Peak, but the team never visit that area prior to the Dark Lord fight. And they do sometime later when they begin looking for clues on where the Dark Lord could be hiding. So I think the twist of the Great Sage being possessed by the Dark Curse and becoming the Dark Lord is a great way to continue the story. Epic cutscene moment! I think the missions in the Travel Sub are a great way to introduce players to the new locations they now have access to now that the Dragon is available for fast travel. Not only do they get to explore new settings, but it is also a first look into what's in store in the Traveler's Hub. Peculiar is a very interesting setting in Miitopia, being the most, well, peculiar out of all of them. The sky is pink, the vegetation on the trees resemble candy, and the fact you can start in the plains and then all of a sudden you're in the forest or a desert, and even a castle, which are settings which the team have previously visited. The name isn't lying, it really is a peculiar place, and I love it. Nimbus is also another location I think is very interesting, and also one of my favourites, because I've always loved the futuristic or technology theme. But anyway, Nimbus is a futuristic metropolis in the sky with a factory which the newly introduced robot enemies are created, and it's also connected to the skyscraper which is the key to finding the Darker Lord. I love that it shows the location on where the main enemies of Nimbus are created, and that Nimbus is connected to where the team needs to go for the final confrontation. Even though the protagonist doesn't like the idea of having to fight his friends, he's still willing to do it if that's what it takes to save them. We did kind of see a glimpse of this during the Dark Lord boss fight when Ami is attacking an imp with a team member's face on it. They stop before attacking and apologise to them directly. I can understand this because it would honestly be a very difficult thing to do. Even if it is the right thing to do, hurting those close to us is something we just never want to do. That stained glass in the skyscraper looks very pretty. The information the ex Dark Lord shares with the protagonist gives us interesting details about the Dark Curse. Not only do we learn about the Dark Lord's motives, but we also learn about how it took control of the ex Dark Lord and how the possessed victim is seeing everything in the Dark Curse's point of view. Up to this point, all we knew was it was the origin of the Dark Lord and it possessed the Great Sage. So it's great to see some information about the Dark Curse we haven't learned up to that point. Feeling nervous before the final showdown, very understandable because when something big or serious is drawing near, it's something we just can't help but feel nervous about. <laughs> Every team member is required for the final fight, which means no friend is being left behind all 10 of them got there together, they will end it together. And yes, this fight is amazing. It is a three phase battle where everything you've learned up to this point is utilized. The left hand focuses on damaging your team with coins and swipes, and will hit more than one me occasionally. So keeping an eye on your me's health is priority in this phase. The right hand focuses on magical attacks and locking onto me's. So the use of the shield sprinkles comes into play here, but the safe spot is always an option too. But before the final phase... The body will not be the only enemy to deal with, because just like the Dark Lord, servants will be called in, which this time, will cover for one another. Not only do I really enjoy this fight, but it's also what the four remaining heroes are fighting for in this battle which just motivates me. They are fighting for not just for the world, but also for the Great Sage and their six captured friends. I. I just love this finale. 
After the hearing the backstory of the Dark Curse, I can't help but smile when I choose to save him. To sum up the story simply, he cast away his own face because he was alone which resulted in his death. So picking the option to save him means resurrecting him and giving him another chance at life. Despite only being introduced now, I just can't help but feel happy for the guy. Wherever he is now, I hope he continues to live a happy life. Actually, we do see him again in the post game and he introduces a new area to the hero, but no matter where he is, as long as he is happy again. I already knocked off Sins in my Everything Wrong with parody on Miitopia for the credits and the same applies here. Seeing the cast I put together, I got attached to during my playthrough one last time and the hero sharing a group photo at the end. I've said it once, I'll say it one more time. This is the perfect way to end the game. Before I wrap this up, I will finish up with some thoughts about the post game and everything else I have yet to cover. Now the Travelers Hub will have daily visitors who will need help and this is a great way to recruit new Miis now that the Villa has opened up allowing up to 90 additional Miis to join the team. There are two new areas, Galdos Isle which is a very fun beach themed location and New Lumos which is a techno themed city. Both of these new areas are a great reward after beating the game and the rewards at the end of each location are very worthwhile. At the end of the Galdos Isle is the Elven Charm granted access to the Elf Job. And at the end of New Lumos is the Tower of Dread and Tower of Despair, which are very challenging final gauntlets. Even though the main story is over, there are still many hours of content left to be played. Since I mentioned the elf job, I love that there are also opportunities to find new jobs throughout the post game. Granted there's only two new jobs, but discovering these for the first time was honestly very surprising. And now for the final few wins I did not cover when playing through the game before wrapping up. This game's soundtrack is amazing. There's not a single song in Miitobi's OST that I think is bad. And they must have known how good it is because when you play a song in Miitobi's music section, Mii's run onto the screen and dance to the song. That's honestly very cute and I love that they added that little touch. Enemy designs are also very good, some of my favourites being the Dark Lord, the Orochi, and the Robots. And finally, some of the food they drop actually looks very tasty and I wouldn't mind actually trying some like the dragon fruit, shield gratin, and of course the hell dog, because on this channel, I am hell. <laughs>